Hello, my name is Bayo Akomalafe, and I wish I could hear your name and get a sense of where you are in the world. I have a sense, though, that wherever you are in the world, you might be feeling the winds of change and turbulence blowing. It's not just the fact that we are living in times of troubling divides and divisive politics, and we are questing for something new. We're not alone in the crises that are enveloping our globe. It's not just that we're in a time of loss and pain and suffering. We're also in a time of deep questions and a search for some kind of sanctuary, a search for some kind of way of making sense of these moments. If you're listening to this, you probably are wondering how to frame solidarity, how to be of use, how to conduct your activism, how to make sense of a world that feels increasingly resistant to our attempts to render it intelligible. I'm the father of uh, an autistic son, and sometimes I struggle trying to meet him in his moment. I want to hold him, and yet I notice that my holding can become some kind of asphyxiation, my anxieties about his future clouding my love for him and my becoming father. You don't have to be a parent to feel that these moments are mothering us in, in strange ways. And you might have questions about how to address these times, how to become responsible. You might even be wondering, yeah, I hear all that, but I'd rather just be safe and keep my people safe and be well off in my safety. But even that often feels like it doesn't quite address the issues at stake because even safety can become insidious. I'll tell you a story about that. Well, it's not quite a story. It's a moment in history when ships plying the Atlantic Ocean, transporting 11 million black bodies from the African continent to the so-called New World, they would often notice that their slaves that were stolen will try to end their own lives by jumping overboard into the waters. The captains were worried and they felt maybe the thing to do here is to try to keep them safe. We've tried everything else. And so they built new kinds of architectures, accompaniments to the slave ship. They attached huge nets on the hull of the ship. And this was a technology to keep them indoors, if you will. I've often thought about this technology and and the insidiousness of safety. Of course, there are semantic differences and a diversity of how we speak and language the world. But it is also true that the things we say, the ideals we look forward to, and the values we cherish can often become holding spaces, containments, ways to keep us in, ways to render us legible to surveillance systems. So my question is, at what point does embrace become asphyxiation? At what point does protection become insidious safety? At what point does healing becomes trauma in its continuity? At what point does justice become a kneeling on our necks? At what point do our approaches and healing modalities become a source of imprisonment, a way to keep us tethered to modern civilization.